so I have subscribers now. Um, hi, thank you for watching my channel. Um, you may have noticed that I discuss misinformation a lot, mostly to do with the recent convoy against vaccination, but the very first video I made was regarding misinformation around the 2020 election in the United States. Of course, anti-vaxxers were around long before coronavirus and QAnon was one of the causes of election misinformation and not a result, but why do people fall for these? You know, it'd be easy to say they do it because they're stupid. And I have made jokes about this in the past, but I've fallen for misinformation too. And I'm working on a master's in linguistics. Like, if it was too smart to be taken by conspiracies, it'd be someone working on an advanced degree in the use of language. And yet I once believed that the Roman dodecahedron was used for sewing because people on the internet said it was. Everyone from people with professional careers to people who are unemployed, from people with advanced degrees to people who've dropped out of high school, from people who are lonely and isolated to social butterflies have fallen for conspiracy theories. Yeah, I, I recently broke off years long relationships with people who went to my school that I'm going to now because they knew why I was going to Ottawa and insisted they knew more about what was going on there than I did even though I was literally there having my life massively disrupted. But anyways, why do they believe that in the first place? Lots of reasons. For one, our brains are built to identify patterns. It helped us survive as a prehistoric species. You know, the people who noticed what time plants grew faster or where animals migrated during different times or what direction stars move in in the night sky were more likely to survive than the early humans who weren't able to grow plants or hunt or navigate. But like everything else, this comes with side effects. We can't turn this off, so we see patterns in everything, whether there's really a pattern there or not. We'll see religious figures in the burn marks on bread. We'll look at data that can't possibly be related and assume they are just because they look similar. The belief that vaccines cause autism came from the fact, and I said fact because this part is true, the recognizable signs of autism appear at roughly the same time children start getting vaccinated but the two are completely unrelated. Study after study after study have confirmed this. The fact that the timing is the same is a fact the same way that I used to think I lived in a world in the sky is a fact. It did happen because I was working off of incomplete information with all of the logic that a four-year-old brain is capable of. Or take the fact that maps of coronavirus infections are similar to maps of 5G coverage. There's no actual connection between 5G and coronavirus. The only link is that this is where people tend to live. The more people who live in one place, the more coronavirus cases you're going to get because there's just more people to infect and the more profitable it is to build a 5G tower because more people can pay for it there. And if you don't believe me, that's not actually a map of 5G. <laughs> that's a map of Bigfoot sightings. All of these are just population maps. That, that is a map of 5G coverage. <laughs> Still a population map. If, if this is used as evidence in some new conspiracy that Bigfoot created coronavirus to, to wipe out the human population so the cryptid species could take over the world, I will be very upset and a little amused, <clears throat> but mostly upset. But I, I doubt it will because the big conspiracy isn't political. If I could gather a bunch of people who believe in Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster or, oh God, what is that president's name? Um, it's like Nicholas Rob Kennedy? I'm not correct. I'll, I'll correct myself later. Anyways, if I asked people who believed those conspiracy theories why they do, other than the validation of the cryptid itself, I would get wildly disparate answers. I just refer to an actual president as a cryptid. I didn't plan this well. <laughs> um, anyways, if I were to gather 
say, a bunch of incels and ask them that same question in a different building with a bag over my head and a voice modulator because there's no way I'm going anywhere near a bunch of incels, uh, they would unanimously or nearly unanimously say they hate women. Not only that, but in recent years, we've seen more and more conspiracy theorists make their theory their identity. Because you'll notice, I didn't say a bunch of people who believe in Bigfoot and a bunch of people who believe in involuntarily celibate ideology. I said a bunch of people who believe in Bigfoot, a bunch of people who believe in the Loch Ness Monster, a bunch of people who believe in the grassy knoll theory, and a br- a, a, bl a, a bunch of incels. I've reached semantic satiation again. I need to diversify my vocabulary, so I stopped doing this. Okay, in recent years, we've seen more and more conspiracy theorists make their conspiracy a part of their identity. They don't believe in flat earth. They are flat earthers. They don't believe in involuntarily celibate ideology. They are incels. They don't whatever the hell Gamergate was about, they are Gamergaters. Actually, we probably just lumped the last two in together. Anyways, the point is, these are not opinions like what ice cream flavors you like or whether the toilet paper roll should go towards or away from the wall. They're meant to be a part of who that person fundamentally is. And once that happens, it's almost impossible to make someone stop believing it because presenting evidence that disproves their belief is no longer just about correcting misinformation. To the person who makes the conspiracy theory a part of who they are, evidence to the contrary is a personal attack. If you try to tell me I'm Turkish or that my name is Chris Hadfield or that I'm blonde, Actually, I can dye my hair, so that last that last one's not a good one. The point is, there is no amount of information you could give me for those claims that wouldn't require a fundamental restructuring of how I think about myself. So even if you show me a hundred articles about how I've lived in the Ivory Coast my whole life, or whatever place I said earlier, and three articles about how I lived in Vancouver, I would tell you those 100 articles are fake because I know my life. And this may seem like a bad analogy because obviously I know my life, but to the deeply entrenched conspiracy theorist, the evidence for the conspiracy is just as much if not more substantial than the evidence for, like, gravity. Conspiracy theories are built to be nearly impossible to be proven wrong. Part of this is because it's difficult to prove a negative. If I made the claim that polka dotted dolphins exist, I would only have to take a picture of one dolphin with polka dots to be proven correct. However, if I made the claim that polka dotted dolphins don't exist, I could spend the rest of my life taking pictures of dolphins and talking to dolphin experts and there would still exist the possibility of a dolphin with polka dots that just nobody has found yet. I could then claim that the difficulty of finding this mystical polka dotted dolphin is because the people who know that polka dotted dolphins exist are trying to hide that existence because they're, they're, they want to keep the magic for themselves or something. So the lack of evidence from other people is just further evidence for the conspiracy. It's difficult to prove that negative, and a negative is taken as further proof that I've been right all along. Hence, the conspiracy wins, tails, the rational lose. In 1981, Pope John Paul II was shot four times by a Turkish member of an Italian paramilitary secret society who had recently escaped prison. And if this seems like the kind of thing that would get you laughed out of a Hollywood office for being way too complicated, I, I mean, members from multiple countries actually secretly plotting to kill a public figure, well, it actually happened. And the reason it's not as well known, despite the fact that a man was paid to commit a political assassination, is because his victim didn't die. John Paul II recovered from his injuries and went back to whatever it is popes do. Cover for the other Catholic conspiracy, probably. I don't like the Catholic Church. Uh, anyways, 
because the big cause didn't lead to a big outcome, the public at large just accepted the idea that one single extremist was brought to justice. Our brains like it when effects are proportional to their causes. When big causes lead to big things and small causes lead to small events. When that's not true, it feels uncomfortable. So when there is a big event, whether it's personal, like a child being diagnosed with autism or global, like a pandemic has a small cause, like autism just being a thing that happens and some nameless hunter looking for cheap bat meat. It, it feels unsatisfying. So we feel the need to, to look around for the bigger, real cause of that event. Contrast this with what happened after Princess Diana died. Because the death of an internationally well-known figure happened from a simple car accident, it attracted conspiracy theorists. A princess dying from something mundane just doesn't feel proportional or satisfying. We want it to have a bigger, more interesting cause even if we have to make that up. Okay, last but not least, at least for now, like I said in my last video, we like to break the world down into parts we can understand. Real information is often vague and solutions are rarely simple. A lot of boys who end up in the incel community start off by asking, why won't girls date me? And the real answer is a combination of your social skills, hygiene, maturity, apparent values, luck, apparent culture, and other things I've forgotten about because girls are not a monolith who look for the same things as... Anyways, girls won't date you because feminists is a lot easier to understand and provides a simple solution. Defeat feminism. This kind of black and white thinking on, on top of linking their identity with their beliefs means that conspiracists are very unlikely to listen to people outside of their tribe. I'm not saying it can't be done, I'm just saying it probably can't be done actually, yeah. So where does this leave us? Unfortunately, not in a very good position. But I will say this, if there is a person in your life who seems to be falling down a conspiracy theory rabbit hole, please reach out before it's too late and they stop listening to anyone who's not a conspiracist. If they've already fallen down that rabbit hole, then I have some links in the description where you can talk to other people who are currently going through the same grieving process. I don't have answers. I just have really, really stupid puns. Why are people who cut trees so muscular? Because they're lumberjacked.